Hello everyone. I just wanted to show you another new tool that's on Unifrog that you might find useful, especially during the next couple of months. Um, if you start off by going onto your home page on the Unifrog website and scroll down past most of the other functions, if you go right towards the bottom really, you'll find under where it's got the personal statement, the classes, the subject references, is your CV resume. And there's a great tool on here that you can use to get started, either to tweak a CV if you've already got one um, underway and to maybe you want to reformat it, you can use this tool. Or if you've never created a CV before, this is a great place to start. So you can just click on the start icon here. So once you click on that button, this brings you into the CV page and it's really well set out. It's really easy to understand. There are just different sections that Unifrog has already created for you, which are the main sections that you need on a CV. Your info, introduction, competencies, experience, education, interests, and behind my head that you can't see at the moment, it also says referees. So these are the key things that should be on any CV anyway. What Unifrog is really good for for is it allows you space to write about each of these things in a really organized and well presented way and you can add as much or as little as you want to and then it will allow you to preview at the end. So I'll just talk you through quickly now the kind of things you might be asked to fill in and what you can do for this. So it's really simple. The first thing is just your basic contact information that you need. You can click edit here to fill this in. And obviously you'll already have your name stored from your account and then you can change your telephone number, email address and where you live. You can either put a really specific address there or you can just put your general town there. You can update that or cancel changes. So if you do ever want to change your number or you want to use a different email, then you can edit that at any point. The bit under that then is a personal introduction and here it's asking you to describe yourself focusing on your strengths. This is that the employer or whoever's looking at your CV gets a sense of the type of person you are. So this should be quite personal to you and give an idea of your personality. What you want to do though as well is to tailor this to what you might be using the CV for. So whether you might be using it for an apprenticeship whether to apply just for a part-time retail job or hospitality job, that's going to depend on what attributes of yourself you want to draw out and really push to the forefront here. What is really useful on the Unifrog tool as well is before it asks you to write about yourself, it actually gives you some examples of ways that you might want to think about um, promoting yourself depending on what you're applying for. So for example, if you're applying for work experience at a law firm, there's a little example here of the kind of things you might want to push forwards about yourself. And it also gives you an idea of appropriate phrasing as well, the kind of level of formality that's needed. There's another example of if you're going to use this to apply for an apprenticeship in construction. Again, the kind of things you might want to draw out about yourself that would be more relevant really for what you're applying for. And then lastly, if you were just applying for maybe a part-time job alongside studying as a barista, a local coffee shop, then the kind of things you might draw out there. So these little snippets of advice and examples are really useful. I might give you a little flavor of the kind of thing you can write about yourself. You've then got a nice little text box. Okay, you've got up to... Um, sorry, you've got a recommended 200 word minimum for what you should write about yourself. So think about the things that you want to promote about yourself that you think makes you an employable person. And then when you're ready, you can just save that and then it'll take you back to the previous screen. If we scroll down then, the next thing it'll ask you about is certain competencies. And you may have already thought about these in the other areas of Unifrog where you can track your competencies and evidence them. You can list as many or as little here as you want to. And it's really up to you in terms of how much depth you want to go in to explain how you've evidenced them. Again, these, really, these examples here are really nice. So here's how you might write about your competencies. It gives you an idea of the kind of quotes and what you can say about them. So you might say that you're a creative person, but there's an example of what you can say about that to evidence it. You may want to promote that you think you're somebody that's really good at teamwork, but then you want to back that up by saying something about it. And it could just be a simple sentence like the one shown in the examples, but obviously you want to make it personal to you. 
There's another little tip as well on there to check what skills the job you're applying for requires. So if you're applying for a job, there'll be a job specification. You want to look for the personal specification and what kind of person they're looking for there. That'll always be available for you to find and you want to tailor what you're saying then in accordance to that. And then the format of how you fill it in is really easy. You just literally choose from the competency list. Okay, you can choose all these pre-selected ones, but you can choose also choose other. And then you can fill in a little example of how you think you've demonstrated it. And then it's automatically added and then you can add a new competency when you're ready. The next section then is work experience. So anything that you've done that you haven't got paid for that may have given you certain experiences of different sectors or different ways of working that you think are worth talking about. Again, it's a really easy to fill in form. You just put your role where you completed certain work experience or you can put volunteering in here as well and then the date started and finished and it's also useful to maybe explain the role a little bit and explain kind of what you were able to prove there's again some good bits of advice here so they think about kind of how you would talk about work experience or a doctor surgery if you were lucky enough to do that in the past um an apprenticeship at a hair and beauty salon or for a job as a retail assistant. These are the kinds of things you could be saying. So again, it gives you the sense of kind of how to phrase it. When you come back down then and scroll down again, the next thing after work experience is your education. And now obviously you've got a few more things you can add to this as you can add your AS CAGs that you received in the summer. So what you want to do is put these in in reverse chronological order. So start with your newest qualifications. So when you're older, if you've gone to university or you completed apprenticeship, then you'd put then your qualifications that you've gained at that point, reversing backwards. At this point now, you would just put any AS qualifications if you're studying ASs. If you're not studying BTECs then you can't put anything yet and then you would go back towards your GCSE so they would be the second thing. What you might want to do here though is you could maybe put in what you're currently studying and predicted grades um, if you think that that would be important to what you're applying for. So again when you press the edit tool here it just allows you to put in the qualification that you've obtained, the dates in which you studied that, the institution, which in your case would be Radha Comprehensive School, or if you went to another school beforehand. And then if you, um, what you could do is just do the qualification GCSEs, and then in the text box then, this is where you can specify the particular grades you had in particular subjects. And then again, when you're ready, you can click Save. There is a few little bits of advice up here. So if you haven't received results yet, how you can kind of talk about that. And if maybe you've been disappointed about results, there's certain ways you can phrase that as well in the text box. So these are quite useful to talk about as well. And then if you come back out to the general CV interface, then there are just two sections left that you could fill in. The first one is other interests, so what else makes you an excellent candidate? And you want to use this space really to show off anything else you don't think you've had a chance to show off in the other sections. Things that, you know, show your hobbies, your interests, but also say something about you as a person as a result of that as well. There are different examples here of maybe what might be appropriate when applying for certain things. So if you were appeal, uh, applying sorry, for a school leaver program at an accountancy firm, these might be some things you pick out about yourself to talk about there. If you were applying for a business administrative apprenticeship, again, some things where the skills kind of match up, even though it was a hobby, interest or something else you got involved with. And then lastly, if you were um, applying for a volunteering role in an old people's home, then the kind of things you might want to draw out about yourself here through stuff you've got involved in. So it's all about the way that you phrase it as well. You can just list the activity, list the dates in which you kind of started and finished this. If it's just an ongoing hobby that you do, then you can obviously leave it blank if it's still ongoing. But it might be just something that you involved yourself over the summer, over lockdown, maybe during year 12, and you can just limit the dates there. But there's also the text box again where you can explain this, what it involved and what you learned out of getting involved with this activity in a bit more detail to highlight certain things for the person reading the CV.
And this just leaves you with one last section there, which is references. And your references, what you're doing here is you're nominating a referee who is somebody basically that can vouch for you and can say what type of person you are. It's usually a good idea to maybe have an academic reference and somebody who's more of a character reference and knows you personally. But you shouldn't put anybody like family members or people who are just your friends. It should be somebody that knows you in another kind of capacity, a bit more of a professional capacity. You can leave this blank technically and just put references available on request but to be honest I think it gives a better impression of transparency if you just name references there and then. It's important to ask permission for people to be a references beforehand so if you'd like to list for example your form tutor or Dr Rowe or myself then it's just polite to ask them if it's okay to list one of us for your reference just so that we're aware that we may be contacted if you apply for a particular job or so on. And again, with your referees, you usually just nominate two and you just put their name, their role, the company, organisation or institution that they work for or represent, um, their phone number and their email address so they can be contactable. So then what um, a prospective employer might do is if they're quite interested in your CV, they would get in touch with your referee and maybe ask them some questions about you just to make a judgment of whether they should invite you for interview, etc. And again, there's a bit of advice here. So there's some pros on using references available on requests. There's pros of adding specific references. And there's some advice on who you could add as a referee as well. So there's some really useful tips on that. So once you've completed all of those sections, you can come back out to the general interface. Now, remember, you can do this um, bit by bit. You can do it in one go and then come back to it and add to it later. Or obviously, you can create it as it stands and then things may change. You might gain extra experiences and then you can update it on here accordingly whenever you want to. So the section that we've been filling in is the right section because you can add, you can edit and you can even delete text. Right here though is the preview section and what we can do here which is really useful to see it's our final product so everything that you've input Unifrog then will put that into an appropriate CV format for you essentially and you can see that everything I've inputted just as some examples has been organized nice and clearly in a particular order and it all looks quite nice and neat and tidy. Obviously mine is a bit sparse as I haven't filled it in fully yet. Um, but as you see it taking shape, you can see what it looks like and then you can check if you're happy with that. And then you can actually save that as a PDF so it's ready to print off or to email to prospective employers if you see any opportunities coming up. Okay, so it's a great little tool to use to get started with a CV, okay, to start to gather your ideas together, especially to help you organize it as well. If you're somebody that feels like you you don't always maybe organize and order things in the right way and make them look professional, it's a really nice tool for doing that. And your CV, you know, you really want to start thinking about now if you haven't already put together a CV. Um, lots of you are going to be thinking about maybe um, Christmas temp jobs jobs and things coming up or applying for part-time jobs as you go um, further into year 13 um, and also in Welsh back in the autumn term you'll actually have to have a CV as part of the destination passport so if you kind of get started on this and have one underway that's a really good start for that as well okay any questions and obviously you know how to get in touch but have a little explore of this tool on Unifrog and I'm sure you'll find it very useful